Top 10 Fun and Interesting Facts About Ice Climbing. How Expert publishes quick how-to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 Fun and Interesting Facts About Ice Climbing. Number 10! Ice climbing is a winter sport that uses ice axes and boot-mounted crampons to ascend frozen waterfalls and other ice features. Ice climbing originated as training for mountaineering, where climbers would occasionally be faced with icy conditions, so they would ice climb to practice their skills. However, it has gained popularity in the last four decades and is now practiced as a sport in its own right. Number 9! Ice climbs fall into two major categories, alpine ice and water ice. Alpine ice forms when snow compacts over time to form climbable ice. Alpine ice is common in the greater ranges like the Himalayas, the Karakoram, and the Alaska Range, but uncommon in places like the Rockies or the Alps. Water ice forms when water flowing over steep terrain freezes in the winter. Water ice can form anywhere that the temperature drops below freezing. Water ice is generally more difficult than alpine ice, since frozen waterfalls are usually steeper and more fragile. However, the aesthetic beauty of climbing frozen waterfalls is very attractive to most ice climbers, which makes water ice climbing the far more popular sector of the sport. Number 8. Ice climbers use ice tools, one in each hand, to ascend frozen waterfalls. Ice tools are different from ice axes in a few key regards. First, ice tools are designed to be used as a pair, while ice axes are generally used individually. Second, ice tools are shorter since they're designed to be swung overhead into firm water ice, while ice axes are longer and primarily designed to be planted into the snow and ice at chest to waist level. Third, ice tools have a smaller angle between the pick and the shaft, providing more leverage against the ice when the going gets steep. Finally, ice axes typically have a straighter shaft, which allows them to be plunged easily into the snow while ice tools have a large molded grip at the bottom, providing better purchase when a climber is hanging from them. Number 7! Staying warm is one of the biggest challenges of ice climbing. Being outside for extended periods of time in the winter is already difficult enough, and ice climbing adds a couple of factors that make it even harder to stay warm. For one, ice is just frozen water, and if it isn't far below freezing, there's often some liquid water running down through the ice. In these conditions, it's very difficult to stay dry. Hands and shoulders especially become soaked very quickly. Additionally, ice climbing involves swinging your hands overhead, which can cause blood to rush out of them. Ice climbers often complain of the screaming bar flies, which is a condition that occurs when your hands are so cold that they lose circulation entirely. Not only is this uncomfortable, it can also lead to frostbite if not addressed. Number 6. Ice climbers use ice screws to anchor themselves into the ice. Ice screws are metal tubes, typically between 6 and 10 inches long, that screw into the ice using threads on the exterior of the tube. The hollow middle allows ice to be pushed out as the screw goes in. The end of the ice screw has a metal carabiner hole, called a hanger, integrated with a crank used to insert and extract the screw. Ice screws are remarkably strong, a properly placed screw in good ice can hold over 7 kilonewtons or approximately 1,600 pounds of static force. Number 5. Ice climbers use much of the same equipment as rock climbers. Carabiners, ropes, helmets, and harnesses are all basically the same between the two sports. Rock climbing and ice climbing have many of the same demands, and while some equipment might have special features for ice climbing, most rock climbing gear will work for ice climbing as well. However, there are a few exceptions. The most notable is ropes. A good rope for ice climbing must be dry treated, which is not an important consideration for most rock climbers. Dry treatment is a chemical treatment process that applies a hydrophobic coating to the fibers of the rope, which keeps it from soaking up water. Ice climbing can be a very wet sport, and if your rope gets wet and then freezes again, it can be difficult to handle and even impossible to control potentially becoming very dangerous. Luckily, most climbing rope manufacturers offer a dry treatment option for their ropes. Number four. 
One important tip for ice climbing is to bring several pairs of gloves. This serves a few purposes. First, it allows you to switch between pairs if your gloves get soaked. Second, it allows you to bring a couple different weights of gloves. It's common to use a thinner glove for dexterity while actually climbing, then switch to a heavier glove or mitten while hanging out at the base of the route or in between pitches. A good tip is to keep your heavy mittens inside your jacket so when you finish climbing, you can pull them on and they'll already be warm. Toss your climbing gloves in your jacket in the meantime where they can warm up and dry out a little bit. Number three. It's critical to wear a helmet and glasses while ice climbing because ice is a fragile medium and falling ice can easily injure a climber. Although not recommended, some professional ice climbers choose to climb in kayaking helmets with a big brim in order to provide more protection for their face and eyes. For most people, however, a normal climbing helmet is the best option. Glasses are important as well because swinging your ice tools can produce small ice fragments that will injure your eyes. Some ice climbers even attach clear face shields to their helmets to protect their faces without the fogging issues that glasses sometimes cause. Number two. Water ice climbing follows a standardized international grading system from WI1 to WI6, with WI1 being the easiest and WI6 being the most difficult. Difficulty ratings are based on the steepness of the climb, the duration, and the complexity. WI5 and above is generally considered the realm of experts and professionals, while WI2 and below is so easy that most ice climbers don't bother. The most popular ice climbs in the world are all WI3 or WI4 in difficulty. Number one! Did you know that some of the most famous waterfalls in the world have been ice climbed, including Niagara Falls? In January 2015, Will Gadd, a Canadian professional ice climber and one of the most renowned ice climbers in the world ascended the frozen ice just next to the main flow of Niagara Falls. He rated it as extremely difficult because the main falls were still flowing, thundering just a few feet away from where he was climbing. Because the spray was forming light, styrofoam-like ice, normal ice screws wouldn't work. Instead, Gad and his team devised a special anchor called a specter, almost like a miniature ice tool that they could hammer into the ice to anchor themselves. Nobody has been able to repeat the achievement since. If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more How Expert Top 10 videos for all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics that you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you, have an amazing day, and take care. How Expert publishes quick how-to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more.